where the treats at. Is, is this the, the passing of the torch, right? Is this what this signifies? It, it comes down to that, that front office and what they feel is most important. The champ is here. We've touched down from a higher plane. Why you made it here? We always look forward to that week because it was always intense. You know that we ain't coming back. We got to. The man, the myth, the legend, Dante Hall. My, my, my favorite player growing up was Dante Hall. I love you guys in the show, but Dante was my guy. Get to dashing because you're done on the war feet. This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag, Balance 7, and PlayActionPools.com. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college sports action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest half-million-dollar NFL Mega Contest, the world's largest $200,000 NFL Survivor Contest open now at Bet Online. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. Take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager will be refunded up to $25 for new customers only when signing up and using promo code NFL100. Bet online is the safest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. So I don't know if you heard, but apparently former NBA player Lamar Odom may be returning to professional basketball in Spain soon. I was reading a press release about how he started taking a pH balancing alkaline supplement called Balance 7, and that's what has helped him bounce back from his hospitalization in 2015. He even said, I have an enormous amount of energy, which is good for me. It's important when working out. I always need energy to level up. I couldn't agree more with Lamar. And after watching him fight Aaron Carter in July's celebrity boxing match, I think it's safe to say that Balance 7 is working for him. Cool thing is we've got a promotion running with Balance 7 right now, where if you go to their website, balance7.com and use the code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, at checkout, you'll receive a free four ounce bottle of My Smooth Skin with any purchase of Balance 7 products. That product retails at $13.99. So I'd say it's pretty worth it. Again, head to balance7.com and use the code BLEAV at checkout to get in on the promotion. I know I will. If it worked for him, I think it can work for you too. Hey, hey guys, welcome to another episode of Chief Concerns. Got your host, former cornerback Eric Warfield and former tight end Jason Dunn. Fellas, how are you guys doing? Uh, what's up, what's up, what's up? How's the evening going for you? It's going, you know man. I mean? I'm, I'm ready to get this thing kicked off. <laughs> I wish we were. Not, I wish we were like in football, like in the midst of football season. But <laughs> no, we're not too far away from kickoff. More no. week, baby. No, we, we got the 53 man roster. You know, it's the first step. Now it's time to go ahead and get everything busy. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah you know the unfortunate part. I just saw the day that old Willie Gay got turf toe. So. Mm. And uh, and Matthew has uh, is in COVID protocol as of just like, yeah. before the show. Um, but yeah, before we kind of like get into like, the whole like um, the three man roster and what we saw last week from the game, um, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, just random fans, you know, these next these last two days, cut down days. I mean, these are pivotal t- moments in players' lives. You know, <laughs> it's their livelihood. You know, it's like as if you know regular people got fired and the whole world could see you know, who got fired and who didn't, right? Um, I know you got you guys played in the NFL for a long time. Um, do you guys have any like you know words of wisdom for players who may be going through maybe one some of the hardest times in their life in the last two days? Like getting come from a team. Um, do you guys have anything to say to these players to kind of pick them up? I mean, it's just basically just keep working. You know, if 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 a team you know saw potential in you to, to bring you on, um, you know that means you have at least something that that you could offer them. Uh, and and if you can't offer that particular team, there's there's 31 others out there that, that that you can possibly, you know, earn a roster spot on. So just keep working, you know, stay positive, uh, but find another source of income while you can. Don't just sit on your butt, you know, get a, get a job doing something, you know, you utilize that education that you got wherever you came from. And, uh, you know, just keep yourself busy, keep your mind busy, and uh, just be ready. You never know when you get that call. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect advice. I mean, it's really what it is. I mean, you know, just because – you know, something happens here, your dream dies here, doesn't mean it's going to die everywhere else. And so, like he says, man, you just got to be ready. 
You got to be ready when, when your agent calls you, when a team calls, because I was going to be looking for people. I mean, it's just how it happens in, in the nature of the business. Uh, you know, people get hurt all the time and they always need somebody. And the best thing you could have possibly did these uh, three games was put on tape uh, your best, best performance you possibly could have, you know, where teams can evaluate and to say, Hey, look, this is a guy that we need on our squad. You know, maybe the guys that we had didn't have the caliber that he had as far as, uh, you know, film wise. So that, 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 that was really important, but yeah, that, it's just stay in the shape, stay in the game ready. You know, you know, every single day is just game game day, right? Hey, let all of that with, uh, you know, getting the release, Hey, let it just flow off of you, right? Just let it let it just roll off you off your shoulders. You know, mourn for a little bit, pick yourself back up, man. Let's get back in the game. But like he said, man, keep yourself busy, keep your mind busy uh, while you're doing it, so you're just not sitting around twiddling your thumbs. So, you know, that's the main thing, man. To just keep that mental uh, sharp and physical. Yeah, I mean, we saw we saw a lot of guys, you know, uh, like Darwin Darwin Thompson he found a new home already. So a lot a lot of these guys who you know have been cut. They found um, other, other teams to have gone to. So, you know, good luck to them. Darwin Thompson, um, I, I love his game. And being a short guy myself, I love seeing short guys uh, succeed in the league. So it's uh, it's cool to see. Um, but uh, so before we get into the 53-man roster, we got to, you know, we got we to gotta go from what we saw last week and, and get to the 53-man roster. So last week in the final preseason game, the Chiefs beat the Vikings 28-25. to the guys really put it all together. It looked like the real deal. I know that's what uh, he wanted to see, a fast start. He wanted to see the offense we know and love, you know, bombs away, Mahomes to Tyreek. Um, and then later on, we saw a little dose of the four tight end set that uh, J.D. was excited to see. Um, and obviously, we saw the O-line create holes for uh, Jarek McKinnon last week, which is awesome to see Jarek McKinnon stepping up. Uh, he made the team as well. But uh, what were your overall takeaways from the game? I mean, I wasn't, you know, shocked at anything. Uh, um the one thing was uh, we immediately noticed, well, heck, that's just the thing within the offense. And you go to audibles, you know, um, when Patrick made the, the audible, the safety comes down, they give away. So then they do the little deep ball to Tariq over um, Breland, Breland yeah. you know, and, and, and you know, hate, you hate to see it done to Breland because he's one of our, one of our own uh, that, that helped us win a Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, you get caught in the moment. You get you get you get taken advantage of. So, um, but other than that, you know, I was, I'm just happy to see, you know, that the offensive line came to what came together well. You know, they they, they look like they're they're, they're going to be set for the season, um, and we got good depth. Um, you know, I can't really say I wasn't expecting Patrick to come out and do what he he does because he does it every single week. You know, Tariq's the same way, uh, but it's just the other guys that. You know, that you're trying to look at with certain positions, you know, who's going to step up, who's going to be our next superstar, uh, who's going to fill in certain spots as far as a second receiver, uh, how's the defensive line going to look. And, you know, we've gotten rid of uh, who I thought was one of our uh, key guys that was hurt last year in Taco. Um, but yet, you know, the defense doesn't look that bad in the front seven. Um, I just – as we've said the last couple of weeks, I'm still stoked with the idea of uh, Chris Jones being able to move around and and to, um, you know cause havoc either on the inside or outside. But other than that, I wasn't surprised with anything. Um, you know, right now I think we've won all of our preseason games, and so that's usually a good thing going into the season um, because you know that your backups have, have prepared just as well as your starters. Yeah, it it, it was. Uh, Really excited to see, you know, people in the stadium uh, for the game. And, you know, you're talking about Breland. I'm sure this happened a time or two. <laughs> he's at Kansas City going against Tyreek. So he did. he's like, Dad, got it. Dad, come on. <laughs> come over here, man. Press corner on this guy. So, so it, it's, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things, man. It's fun. Like you said, it's one of our own. So, you know. One, two, That's the best way you want to play Tariq is his press. I, I get it. Hey, but the bad gotta, part about it is the safety. On. The no, the safety showed his cars too quick. As soon as that safety came down, I was like, "Oh, you are gonna do this? We gone!" Like over time, over time, big giveaway. Right, and, and and the thing is, the ball was placed beautifully too. That was a yeah. beautiful ball. You know, it was like somebody. I, I think somebody used the comment said he overthrew Tariq. Like nothing. Oh over. no, <laughs> no, no. You know, Ty, Tyreek. You know, his his leg had been bonding for a little bit. 
And the other time he's not stretching out for it. You know, it's, 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 he's popping right in the basket. And that's what he did. So it was beautiful. It was a beautiful throw. Uh, but of course, man, like you said, offensively, uh, everything looks stellar. Uh, so of course, I'm a rave about the four tight end set. Oh my gosh. And I, I was just sitting and I couldn't believe it. I got him to start counting. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. One, two, oh, come on, four here. And I just got up. I'm like, yeah, baby. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And the thing is, man, it just gives you, oh, man, so many opportunities to do things on offense. I, I don't think people really understand. You know, especially when you have, you know, three guys that can, you know, catch footballs on practically everybody, right? We say, Bill, you know, Bell's a bigger tight end, so – you know, he, he's not going to stress the defense like like Travis or, or Jody or, 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 or Gray, right? But the thing is, he's still effective. And that's what it gets. It gives you that element of being able to run the football with these guys in the game. So all of a sudden, you got big bodies leaning on smaller bodies to get the ball in the end zone. And so that bodes well for, for Patrick, for the, for, for the running back, for the lineman that you're helping out there too. So – now you just uh, eliminate all those little guys trying to, you know, in the game, you can run screens with them. I mean, it, it's, man, with that personnel, man, you can do so much. And I, I'm just sitting over there. I was telling somebody, I, I just was counting the ways, how creative you can get with that. Now, look, obviously, we're not going to put it in all the time, right? But it's a good switch up. Even You if, got you know, me because I, I don't see a whole lot we can do with, with the big tight end setting set for short yards and red zone. Well, I, uh, okay, see. see now, Grant, Grant. My only thing to see with that is that, you know, especially with picking up Noah, uh -huh. uh, young, talented guy, great size, great hands, uh, great player. Kelsey's getting older. So yeah. we, we don't know what the, what the outcome's going to be with him. Well, we do know. I mean, he's got a few years still. He's going to perform at a high, um, at high performance. But, and he's also ranked the best tight end in the game right now. It, it, yeah, exactly. It, exactly. So if, if you're saying that, right, so he has a skill set of a wide receiver. I mean, he's up there with the top receiving guys in, in the league, period. So you basically True. have a wide receiver in, in Kelsey. Jody Forson was a, a, a prior a wide receiver who turned tight end. So you got you I, you ultimately have two guys, wide receivers out there on the field. I mean, you could you could immediately uh, burst into a whole different, uh, you know, formation if you wanted to. So that's what I'm saying. You can run it on second or third down. You can run it in, anywhere in the in in on the field, you know. So, you know, on your twenty, you know, on the fifty midfield, you know, going into the red zone, you can run it anywhere. Now, like I said, granted, it's a package. You put them in it just, and it's a good mix up. It's, that's where I look at it. It's just a good change of pace where you got teams thinking, right? Then all of a sudden you give a, a defensive coordinator a little bit more to think of. Okay, so that's the way I look at it, man. Uh, as far as at least for the four tight end set. And so uh, my guy met on, on, on Twitter, he said he, he, he called it a, a skyscrapers and cleats. I, I thought that was, that was like, that was fire. I love that. I was like, man, that's got to go. That's got to be a thing now. Skyscrapers and cleats. That's what it has to be with these dudes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was Lance that spoken to put that out there. And I was just like, I, I tweeted him back like, man, I, I love that. You know? So the thing is, man, give Lance the credit on it. But that man, we got to get that a hashtag or something, man, about these skyscrapers and cleats, uh, and cleats out there in Kansas City now. Uh, now defensively, hey, e, we got to have something, man, with the tight ends. You know what I'm saying? There's a good crew out there, man. We, we, hey, we got the best tight end crew in the league right now. Not even hands down. Not even close. Not even close. Now defensively, so some, some great things on defense. Uh, like you said, defense line did a great job. Linebackers, you know, of course, showed up for the game. Uh, the corners did, you know, a, a tremendous job. Now, thing is, like you said, uh, my question going into the season is going to be the defensive ends. Right. Now, Chris, we know we were going to get out of him, right? Blake Clark, how, what's going to be his his fate dealing with that? Other guys after that, I needed to see more. I just needed to see some more defensive ends, man, more, more plays and more oppression on the quarterback. The interior is going to be good. Defensive ends, uh, uh, young guys. I uh, still wanted to see Kando do a little bit more. I still wanted to see a little bit more out of him. But it's good. Then we got him on, on, on the on the roster, man. And, and so he'll learn. He'll, he'll get better. And it looked like he was getting better, you know, over the course of the games. So that that is, uh, 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 you know, rewarding to see. But other than that, man, I mean, the game it looked like it, it, you, what you expected it to. 
I don't think Minnesota's going to beat us. We got a better team than Minnesota, period. Sure. Now, now the thing that, that you know, moving Chris out, out to that outside is it's going to open up a lot of holes for the draw. So it open up holes for the run, you know, because when you got somebody like that that's going to have to fill that quick, it's such, so easy, it creates the gap, you know. And, you know, you got first-year linebacker in Bolton, uh, Gay, who's hurt. Uh, Hitchens, I think he's, you know, a little bit slow is getting to certain gaps. Um, so we don't know if, if you know, I think Bolt is taking Hitchens' place, right? Is it Kitchens? Hitchens. 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 Okay, I got it right. Um, so when you got, you know, you got somebody that's that good getting up the field so fast, it creates those gaps. It's the same thing that we do, that I won't say we do, but most teams do when they play against the Rams. You run it kind of right at Aaron Donald because you know he's going to get up the field so quick. And that's – unless you got those quick and good uh, instinctive linebackers, that's going to be big run game. Uh, you know, and, heck, you know, we're going up against a two-headed monster in Cleveland that's, you know, getting up the field that quick. <laughs> I, I don't – No, but that's, that's why we got Reed, though. That's why we got Jaren Reed. You know, Reed, if, if he takes a double team, you leave Chris out there one-on-one. I mean, he's going to destroy any tackle out there. I mean, he was killing guys on the inside. And so – if he crashes and comes in and, and, and gets some, some, you know, some tackles, which I think he'll do. I mean, he just, he just, man, he's an animal out there, man. He's a beast. I mean, he's just stronger than everybody <laughs> else. You know, think they pad. And, and Reed is going to fill that hole where, you know, you, where you was able to move Chris out there. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. I mean, we just haven't gotten into a game, you know, real speed game time, you know, to where you see actual play. From how Reed's gonna play, I, I like getting Jaron Reed. I like, I, I think it helps the defense yeah. to where we can move Chris Jones. That's the whole point of getting him. Uh, but I just haven't really seen what the front seven can do as a whole unit. Yeah, you. you know, even with the new linebackers and then adding adding Reed and 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 then the the in and out with, with Jones. That's I just want to see what what the front seven is capable of. I, we the utmost confidence in the secondary, but they're only going to be as good as the front seven is. So. Right, you're right. Yeah, and and and, and you're right, man. This this first week is going to be a great test. <laughs> Dude, first, you know what? Five weeks is going to be a great test as far as like with the defense, man. It's it's, it's going to be solid to see what they can do. Yeah, uh, but if 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 Reed and uh, if he could take up at, at double team inside there, uh, and and big boy in the middle, I can't think of his name right now. What's his name? Uh, who's that? Uh, is this Saunders? Saunders, yeah, and they, they got the the one guy with the, the crazy name. I can uh, uh, a warden. No, no, no. Oh, shoot, well, hold on, man. Bad guy. I can't even look because I'm on. I tell you, I'm on the phone. On the phone, <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I'll tell you in a second, man. I um, can't believe I got his name. Like when you see stats, like because you know, we talk about the pass rush, we we preseason right and take us for a grain of salt, but we led uh, tied with the Niners in uh, total sacks in preseason. But do we preseason? Preseason, yeah. Not ninety. That's his name, ninety. I couldn't think of. Oh, know, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, that's why I was like, yeah, you know, we, we got some, we got some beef up front, man. We get, and some guys are gonna get after it. So yeah, we have good depth at, de- at defensive tackle. Great, sure. great depth at defensive tackles. Absolutely right, and then and that's a good thing because you know with those guys rotating in, that's what you kind of worry about. Like, oh man, if you know if Chris goes out, who you got? Who's you know? So these guys kind of they got their feet wet. They're doing a great job. They did a great job during preseason. Uh, and they just gonna get better too during the season. I, I mean, I, I, think, I think the Chiefs' uh, uh, defense is gonna surprise a lot of people. Uh, I see on my fantasy man, people weren't really picking them up. I'm like, yo, these guys are gonna be all right. Believe me, they they gonna be tough. They're gonna be tough. So, yeah, um, yeah. And then also talking about the four tight end set last year, this is something we talked about was kind of red zone offense. And obviously, we have we, we bulked up our offensive lines. It's better this year than it was last year. And plus, you know, have a little variety with the four tight end set. I mean, I could just you know should be pretty versatile when we get, when we get to the red zone with the with a new the new package like that. Yeah, and, and you only had to put in all four, just four, three. Shoot, you may have three. Just multiple tight end sets is what I'm looking at, right? So it's just more than two. You have three in there. It'll be fun to watch. I mean, I'm not yeah, knocking yeah. it. Definitely not knocking it. It's gonna be deadly to watch. E deadly, I man. Hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Shit, call you back. Let you get in that package. Hell yeah, you ain't lying. <laughs> That, that that video I found of you and that touchdown against the Bucks, man, you guys moved. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yo, you know what the crazy thing is on the, on that, that film? I don't know if he remembers or not. 
but we showed it uh, in the in the film room, and so I was I was almost I was a game time decision that game because my back was my back was hurting. You know what I mean? And so you know how you know how it is. Eat you know the game time. Like how you feeling? You feeling all right? My back was just so tight, and so I ended up you know getting a nice little massage. You know vitamin T. You know to kind of you know help loosen everything up. Got out there on yeah. the field, and uh, it was a joke because when I did the little dance and slammed it, coach is like, "Man, Jason, your back was so bad on <laughs> 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 the game." And now all of a sudden here we are here dancing. You know, out there on the field, so he showed it out there, man. I just, I had to laugh at it, but yeah, that's that adrenaline, man. You know, adrenaline. That adrenaline going, dude. Man, you I got don't me feel a, pain. Oh yeah, man, I got me a tub too, man. Come on now, right there in the end zone, and and and, and the fans are sitting there just talking all that cash noise, man. They were just talking all that. Oh man, I try to put that ball in 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 the dirt, man. I try to put it in the earth. <laughs> so, man, yeah, it, it was. Uh, yeah, my back was so tight that it, 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 you were talking about the milk. I was like, just yeah. miles away, I'm all tender. <laughs> yeah. And you said you were paying man. homage to Travolta and with that dance move? Travolta, yeah. Travolta, man, for the for the dance and in Greece. Yeah. I don't know if I watched that, that movie probably that week or something, man, but I love Greece, man. It just got some great, great numbers in it. Come on. That's true. Love Classic. Greece and, and both and all of them. Living <laughs> Newton John. Woo! That was my girl back then. <laughs> Um, all right, so our next concern is obviously we talked about the 53-man roster. We're going to get into a little more than that right now. Um, so our 53 is here. It's ready to go. Um, what do you guys think of the roster as it stands right now? I mean, there was nothing shocking to me that, you know, so far. Um, you know, I think we we kind of understood that the draft picks that we brought in, the free agents that we brought in, brought in and the depth that we were trying to add, Um but also the position that we were trying to fill. So for what we have, you know, it's kind of what was expected. You know, there's not, I don't think there's a cut that's been made that we didn't, you know, expect, except for probably Taco. Uh, but yet he's coming off an injury. So, and I have no idea what he looked like um, in practice, in the preseason games to where the coaches felt like, you know, they, they liked the other guys over him. So, I thought he did a good job last year. I felt like he would, you know, have a good comeback year this year. But unfortunately, it wasn't for him. So outside of that, there wasn't much that happened that wasn't expected. Yeah, I, you know, I, I tell you what, man, I'm sitting there looking at my list. I think I, I was right on it pretty much. Uh, there was a couple names, too, that, that kind of shocked me. Well, not not really shocked me, but I thought, uh, but it makes sense. Like, uh, like I had Kando actually like <clears throat> be on the practice squad. That's why I had, I had him, you know, break, you know, but right now, like I said, with Frank being up in the air with where he's at and then kind of watching what he did this last week. And I, I made this like two weeks ago. So Kendo, you know, actually, uh, you know, to me, uh, deserves to be on the list. Other than that, man, everybody else I, I had on here was pretty much. And then of course the guy that I, I text y'all with, uh, you know, is in, in limbo with things. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> but yeah, it's still out there, still out there, still out there. But it's it's good. I think like we were talking about the presence, and I don't mind saying it. That I didn't know what they was going to do with Kyle. If they was just going to kind of stick with him, or what they you know thought like, hey, is he just going to be on the side? You know, give him another chance or a shot, or you know, want to go somewhere else or what? Yeah. But like I said, his his the veteran presence that he brings, and like I said. You know, we don't see a guy in uh, his uh, his influence on the young guys, you know, in the locker room, in the meeting room is something that, you know, we can't determine or, or assess. Right. And so I'm sure just because because we heard and we know who he is and what family he is, we know what he's going to be all about. So I'm sure they love that aspect of, you know, that, though, too. But other than that, man, everything else was, was cool. Hats off, man, for, you know, for to making it for sure. You know, the guys, man, that didn't put their they time in, you know, it's good. It's good. Feel good stories. Um, this is one thing that a lot of Chief fans were upset about, which, I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. But uh, Cornell Powell, you know, a lot of people thought, oh, this could be the answer to Sammy Watkins being gone, another receiver in the, in the mix. Uh, fifth round receiver, a lot of people were saying, oh, we wasted a fifth round. I mean, we, we ended up – he's on our practice squad now, but – 
I mean, for me, I mean, I've seen many years or a fifth round or sixth round guy, don't, they don't make the team, you know? So like, I wasn't, not that I was shocked by it, but like he, he wasn't getting any reps in the last game. He got, I think he got a couple reps in that last preseason game. And I know you guys said, if you aren't getting reps in that last preseason game and you're not a starter, that's not, that, that doesn't bode well for you. Um, Man, you understand your position when you go into each and every football game, and I'm meaning those, those preseason games. You understand when you go into training camp, you got to take full advantage of the reps that you're given. And if you're not, it doesn't matter if he was a third, second round pick. If he can't live up to the, you know, to where what they were expecting, we as fans can't be upset that the Chiefs had to make, do what they had to do to, you know, if, if he needs that room to improve, practice squad is, is your improvement room. Um, but yeah, you, you got to take advantage of every rep that you're given. Like, you know, whether it's running correct routes, making the right blocks, um, lining up the right way. Like, <laughs> they look at all this stuff. And I don't know what prompted them to put him on, on practice squad, but, you know, that's something that the coaches, you know, they, they go through all of that film, paperwork and all. So uh, you can't be mad at what they do, the decisions they make. You know, we just have to accept it and, and be happy and, and, and look forward to the season. Yeah, no, nah, look, man, it, it makes sense. It makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. I, and to be honest with you, you know, I know everybody was, you know, raving over him and whatnot, but, uh, you know, he, he, look, he has a long way to go. And I'm, I'm just evaluating where he was coming from college and, and, you know, what I was seeing out there on film. And so that's the reality, though. Like he said, man, when you evaluate guys and trying to assess them, look, you're comparing it to the guys that's out here right now. And it's going against guys that, you, that you're going to see on Sunday. Is he ready to go against the Jalen Ramsey, right? Is he ready to go against Cleveland's defense? What are we, what are we talking about here? And so, listen, just because he's, you know, we don't have him – He's not ready. Don't mean he will never be ready. He's just not ready sure. right now. Yeah, He's not ready right now. He, we can easily activate him from the practice squad at any point that we need and feel like he's ready. But right now, man, it's the development. And sometimes when you draft guys, it's for a lot, lot of times, you know, that you're looking for a, a guy to get there. So it ain't going to happen right away for some. That's why I thought Kando uh, was going to be on the practice squad. I thought the same thing with him. I just think his development, at, at least when I was seeing my evaluation of him, wasn't where it was, it was, it needed to be, especially our NFL caliber, like the quickness and the, you know, and being fast and getting out there in sacks and the pressures and like that, at, at no give attitude. Like, you know, when you look, play a defensive end, man, you got to come and bring it every single play. I mean, it just every single play, you can't take no plays off. You know, I had a sky don't lie. And with the things I was seeing some, you know, some of the reps, I was like, yo, that, Hey, that, that's a little bit too lazy right there. But it's also, too, it's a learning process. You know, guys are just coming from college. You got to learn how the NFL is. You know, it's, it's a process. Pal's not quite there yet, and that's fine. That's all right. Shoot, he, he's going to develop. We got him. We drafted him. We're going to keep him. So that's a good thing. He's just not ready right now. Exciting news. Our podcast is partnering with PlayActionPools.com this season to bring some interactive fun to the sport we love most. You'll be able to get in on the action with our playactionpools.com football pick em challenge, which is open to everyone. Here's how it works. Sign up for our contest, Believe Football Pick em, at playactionpools.com, and then get your picks in each week. We're going to select the 10 highest profile games of the week between NFL and college football. Whoever gets the most picks correct each week will win a pair of electric sunglasses and a pair of DC shoes. Again, go to playactionpools.com and sign up for the contest Believe, B-L-E-A-V, football pick them. And if you plan on hosting your own football contests, go to playactionpools.com. They've got Survivor, pick them, as well as cool sportsbook style concept called Build Your Bankroll. Playactionpools.com, your new home for all your office sports pools. And I got to tell you, their interface is fantastic. And so the next concern, um, not really much of a concern, but uh, just kind of good stories. Uh, Jason, you kind of alluded to it. So um, I just want to ask you guys, what does this tell you about guys like like these guys who made the team? Um, so we had a couple two two stories that were kind of cool. It was uh, Doris Fountain, uh, or, uh, Doris or Doris Fountain, um, who was invited for a one-day tryout during rookie minicamp. He was drafted two years ago by the Colts, was cut, and then she's brought him in for a one-day tryout during rookie minicamp. He ends up getting the second to last receiver spot on the team because they just brought in Marcus Kemp um, today uh, to be the, the fifth guy or the sixth guy. Um, and then Jody Fortson, who's failed to make the team two times before, going from receiver 
now a tight end and where which we've seen he's excelled at this year. But what does it tell you when you hear stories like that? What does it tell you about these these two individuals? Stay prepared. You know, that's the thing we were talking about when guys get cut. You know, you, you got to stay prepared no matter what. Um, <laughs> you got a lifetime job ahead of you. You know, you can either go out there and buy you some nice suits and sit behind a desk. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. There's guys that make really, really good money that make some guys, some of those guys make more than professional athletes. But in the situation that where we came from, and I'm, I just speak on a lot of the athletes, uh, uh, this is the best job for us. And if another opportunity presents itself, I got to make sure I'm ready. And those guys are ready for the call. And, and, you know, whether it's a one day tryout, whether it's a me changing positions, if you tell me you need me to go play defensive line, I know I need to go bulk up and wait and get stronger and, 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 and work on certain things coming off the line. But I'm going to do that because I know this job is, it, it doesn't come around very often. This is what's the 0.1% or something smaller that, that guys have a chance to, to, to play at this, at this level. So uh, it's an elite level of, of, of the sport that, you know, some take for granted and never get that opportunity. You know, there's some that work their asses off and they don't get that opportunity. But when your number's call, just make sure that you're ready. You know, shit, if they, I, I don't want to say they call me now because I know I'm not ready. But as, as far as like uh, Bernard Pollard, you know, he's speaking that he wanted to come back. You know, that's the guy that's kept himself ready. You know, he spoke and said he want to come back. And I guarantee you, He's probably in not in the best shape of his life, but he's in really good shape to where he can give some of those young guys a run for their money. Um, but that's because he stays ready. So uh, just because you didn't get the opportunity one year, uh, you've been cut a few times, doesn't mean you give up. Um, but again, I know I said it earlier, it's best to give you a second job or first job just in case it doesn't work out for you. But I'm happy for the guys that have made it, though. Tell you what, man, it, it, it's it, it, we got to recognize the testament for you know the passion, the perseverance of not accepting no, right? And and and, and so when you're sitting over here for guys who 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 been cut, like you said, uh, Fountain, he feels that burn. He, he look, he's done been cut, he's done been released. He knows what it feels to, to be on that other side on the on on the. Uh, you know, on the street, he knows that. And so to me, he was just one of those things that just took, you know, advantage of opportunity on saying like, look, you know what? Uh, I, got, I got to make this happen right now. I done been on the other side of things, right? I know how it feels maybe not to have the job of my dream, right? And it just be in my grasp. And if you could do anything that you can within your own power to obtain it, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put the work in? And so that's what Jody did. Jody went, and I'm sure of it. He went straight to work, put the weight on, said, I'm going to turn it to a tight end. I'm going to make sure I'm going to put the time what I needed that's necessary for me to make it on the squad. And so hats off to him, man, for his perseverance, man, and just that fire. And it's determination. And that's will. That's exactly what that is. That's, he was willing himself to get there out there on the field for the NFL. And hats off to him. I'm so glad and so thankful he's out there, man. And just had, like I said, I'm so proud of him for making it. Now, what I will say is this. I seen Fountain run a, I, he ran a route and it was just like an out route, but it was like one of the best out routes I have ever seen this preseason. I ain't kidding you. I was like, Ooh, man, that was so pretty. I mean, the timing, everything. I mean, I mean, DB didn't have a chance, you know, to really turn his hips to get on it. I mean, it's, it was such a beautiful route combination. The timing, I'm just like, man, this dude right here needs to be on the roster. If he's running every single route. And I was like, man, I, I need to start watching this guy even more. And what I have been doing. And a lot of, you know, you kind of follow the ball a lot because it's, you know, obviously it's what you're going to see. But I started like watching him, you know, all plays. What is he doing when he's not getting the ball? How's he running his route? How's he getting open? What is he doing? And look, he, did, he didn't spare that one second, one moment, one opportunity to show, the, you know, the guys what he can do, the coaching staff. And that's, that's exactly how you got to be. Even when you're not getting the ball, what they say, even when people are not looking at you, how are you working, Right. What are you doing? And so I, I stood watching Mike and I said, man, this guy right here deserves to be on it. And so, you know, to him, man, deservingly so being on 53, man. And I'm going to say that to me, Pal ain't better than them guys. He's, he's just not. We're talking about the evaluation before then. 
He, he ain't, he's not right. He, he's, he's not better than them dudes that's on the roster right now. So he's got a lot of work to do. And I'm sure he was learning. He was watching these guys because they've been there. They've done it. They've been, they've been through the, the hard knocks of it, of getting, you know, released off the team. It, 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 it does something to a person. It does something to a man. Shoot. If you tell a man you can't eat, I'll uh, save your time right now. I'm going to go right back to the drawing board. Blueprint. What I need to do. What I need to get, get better, get back in the NFL. See, because I want these fans out here, uh, you know, uh, rooting for me. But more importantly, I'm going to put myself and my family in a better position if I possibly can. Right? So, hey, that, that's what it's all about, man. That's the NFL. When they say not for long, they mean it. Shoot, you can get cut and released every single moment, every single day. They're trying to, they're trying to uh, 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 you know, come after you. You know, so it's not solidified, man. You got to take every opportunity, like he said, and make the best of it. Uh, I, I, that's perfectly said, J Jason. And I, I think it's a, a lot of fans, you know, you understand, you know, it's not what you guys do is not easy. You know, everyone, you know, everyone throws balls in the backyard and thinks they can be, you know, Randy Moss, Jerry <laughs> Rice, but it's not easy. And for these two guys, Fountain and Fortson, there's probably there's plenty of other guys like this, but for guys who have been said no to and uh, rejected, bounce back and to make the 53 man roster. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot to be said for that. And, you know, the four intestinal fortitude for those guys. So right. we're, we're lucky to have them. Um, yeah. Okay. So for our final question of the night, now this is something I have a feeling it's been a conversation. It's been a topic for us pretty much all throughout the off season. And I have a feeling it's going to be uh, a topic for us. Hopefully not a topic for us for the rest of the season, but at least for now. Um, so last question of the night is uh, after the 53 man uh, roster came out yesterday, I saw a lot of Chief fans being skeptical out there. That's kind of, you know, I'm always looking to see what everyone's the hot topic, right? Um, and this one tweet got a, a lot of attention. Uh, it was, this guy put, if you put your thumb over Tyreek Hill's name when looking at the Chiefs wide receiver group, it's the worst group in the NFL. You just put, if you took, took Tyreek Hill out, essentially. Um, now, this is something we talked about, maybe going after Golden Tate. Do you think that the Chiefs should see what kind of guys have been cut over the last two days, maybe make a play at one of the veteran receivers to bring into this, which is pretty much a young group outside of Tyreek. It's a pretty young group to bring in to kind of you know teach the, teach the guys up. Um, and also Marcus Kemp was brought back. But God forbid something happens to Tyreek. Would you guys be okay with this group of six that we have right now? Or there needs to be a, a, another guy in that group. Would you be okay with the, with the group as it stands with Tyreek Hill wasn't there for whatever reason? I tell you what, man. I, I, I you know what? I, I like the guys in the group. I really do. And and to be honest with you, uh, like last year, when pretty much the same guys, only one you don't really have is Sammy. And Sammy was down, you know, uh, some of the season. Nobody was really saying nothing because they was getting the job done. It was getting the job done. And so now what you have is you got guys that have determination, who are hungry in the room, you know, who want to please. So yeah, you know, Tyree goes down. Hey, we still got weapons. We still got weapons. And so. The great thing about having coordinators like uh, 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 Eric, you know, being to me, you know, putting his mind together, he knows the things he's got around him. He knows the things that Patrick has around him and he's going to utilize it. So, you know, time he goes down, you know, we look, I think McCoy, he could come up, he could step up. He, he can take that role on. And so you overlooking around, you got McCoy, you know what I'm saying? You got Robinson, you got the two new guys. Uh, and, and, and then of course you got, you know, Kelsey, you got Fortson, you got Gray, you got McKinnon. I mean, so look, guys can worry about that. I think we're, we're cool in that room. If they brought a guy in, would I be upset with it? I ain't going to be upset with it, but I think these guys in the room right now are okay. I think they understand how mm -hmm. to run the routes. I think they understand exactly what they want out of them, and, and that's a good thing. You know, and sometimes you bring a, a new guy in, he's got to learn the offense. This, look, I, and I'm sure it's not a really – you know, simple offense just to learn. As a, as I'm sure there's a lot of terminology, a lot of movement from what I'm looking at, you know, because in my head, I'm sitting over here trying to put everything together, like what these things are. So it, it I, I think we're good in the room right now. And I think these guys can get it done. So let's just hope that Tyreek, nothing does happen to him, right? But if it does, uh, I think these guys can get it done. We got enough firepower on the offensive side and our defensive carriers, if we need to, get that help. You know, this is a team sport. It's a team game. That's how people are on. It's a team, period. E? <laughs> e? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Be real, E. Come so, on now. Talk to us. <laughs> Come on, E. Talk to us now. So who's the receivers at, at, at uh, San Diego? Allen? Is that is that about all you know? Yeah. Uh, Keenan Allen and um, yeah, yeah, that's all that's, that's pretty much all okay, I know. Okay, so who who are the who are the receivers that open? Rugs. Yeah, Renfro. Renfro. Um, okay, but those, those guys had names. They made a good name for themselves in college. Uh, the dude from South, from South Carolina. I forgot his name. Yeah. Broncos. Sutton. Sutton. So the Broncos got the other guy. They got a Judy. Alabama receiver also. Judy, yeah. 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 Another one that made a name in college. Right. So right. my thing is, is that there's not a lot of tandems out there that, that you could say that it's just – phenomenal receiving core there's no there's not very many teams that are like cleveland that have big name uh starting starters like like they do yeah um you know you go to arizona you see hopkins and hj green and fitzgerald looks good on paper yeah but how does it you know translate to the field i'm fine with what we have and i said i want to sit there and argue or debate about what we have you know i i don't like who we have at the helm of this ship and as Patrick Mahomes. And so, you know, you put some pieces around him, I know he can get it done. And the number one key piece that's, you know, been year in, year out, year in, year out, the double digit years has been Travis Kelsey. So, you know, right. granted, knock on wood, no, we don't want Tariq Hill hurt. We don't want anybody hurt on our team. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like with him at the helm of that thing, and you know, even with Kelsey out there, we're going to be a productive offense, so. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things, at least wait till it is an issue where you then you do talk about this. And I think that's a lot. A lot of chief fans are just, I don't know, you know, I get it, being reactionary. We, 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 we've had teams in the past where you didn't have the best receiver selection, so you get kind of nervous about that stuff. But, you know, we talk about this team being a Ferrari. You know, you're not gonna buy. You're not gonna go buy the, the new tire for that car until it breaks down. You know, it's, it's expensive. You know, you want right, right. to want to keep what you got there, um, and until it's a problem, then fix it. Yeah, and I think McCall Hardman's done a good job. Pringle Robson, they've all done a decent job up until now. You know, just let let the season fall, come through, and see what these guys have learned uh, extra throughout this 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 camp, this preseason. Um, you know, this postseason from a, a debacle of what we, you know, displayed as a Super Bowl. So, um, you know, let's see what these guys bring to the table this year, what kind of hunger they got. And uh, I'm, I'm just as excited as anybody else about what this team is going to look like this year. And I don't want to just sit there and, and nitpick um, over the receiving core when yet our main concern was the offensive line and finding a defensive end. So we've, we've created depth in both of those. And whatever we have as far as our, our skill positions, I'm good with. I'm 100% I'm good with, you know, whether that's in the secondary, whether that's in the receiver core. Yeah. You know, we got a young linebacker core. I'm good with it. We did, we made the necessary moves to build our offensive line, get depth, add depth, and do the same thing with our, our defensive line. So let's just be happy. We can't, we can't go out and get everything that we need. It's, that's not how this league is, is built. Right. If that was the case, you know, you'd have a lot of teams like the Yankees that just, just could just go out and just buy players. You can't do that. Still, the NFL doesn't allow you to do that. So what you, you get to build within a certain amount of cash flow. And, you know, I, I like what we have right now. Uh, so I'm good. Yeah. And, and I think, I think Kemp and, and Fallon's going to get some reps in there too, man. You know, I guess hungry guys, man, they're they going to get some reps. You know, they, they, I, was, I was really impressed with them, too. I really was uh, during the preseason. Yeah, and even uh, for, even Forts in, in uh, his uh, Zoom interview yesterday, he said that he plans on playing some receiver, too. Whatever they need him to play, if they need him to play some receiver, play some tight end, he said he'll, he'll do whatever. So that's also another weapon right there. Sure, if you need for him to blow up some balloons for a balloon party, he'll, he's going to do it. Sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so as much as much people like, you know, what were you saying, JD? No, go ahead. I, I was just go ahead. I was just gonna say he he was saying that <laughs> my kids got a a, a party uh, for us. And can you can you do uh, come out as a clown or something? Can you can you do? I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> How much you want your cake? Hey, <laughs> he's earned it, man. He's earned it. Get a spot, too. 
more you yeah. can do, the better off you're going to be. For sure. Yeah, and it's, it's one thing, you know, I, a lot of, like, like I said, a lot of fans are just reactionary and everything's just like, everything's fine, you know. The, the, the group we have is fine and nothing to be concerned about. Uh, there's someone actually, uh, uh, during the halftime of the game last week, I said, what has anyone seen out there? Um, is there anything, you know, that you want to see more of? Is everything, you know, spot on? And someone was like, I got, I got no concerns for you guys, chief concerns. I'm all, I'm all good at halftime right now. So that's, you know, that's it. There's no concerns right now. Right. Except the show. That's the, that's the one concern right now. <laughs> good, baby. All right, fellas. Well, uh, that does it for us. Uh, thanks for tuning in to chief concerns presented by bet online next week. We get into the season, baby. It's our, our first week preview show. We're going to have to try to have a special guest on. I'm not going to name who it is yet, but we're going to try to have a special guest on for you guys next week. So um, if anyone has any chief, have it, has any concerns for these two guys, please tweet at us at, at Concerns Chief or email us at chiefconcerns at yahoo.com. Fellas, we'll see you next week for Cleveland Week. Yeah, peace peace out. out.